fuck. Bop, 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 ba, da, bop, ba, da. I heard you're not supposed to swear in the first minute of a YouTube video. Fuck, 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 fuck. How many fucks can I get in the first minute? This video is not advertiser friendly. You're not going to make the, like, one third of a cent that 300 views was going to give you. <laughs> I've, I've had a hard time explaining to, like, like my... Like, basically, my, my older family members, like, how YouTube works. Because I'm like, oh, you don't really make money from YouTube. Like, you, no. that's not really how it works anymore. They're like, oh, well, how much does YouTube pay people? And I'm like, it doesn't, really? No, you need to get sponsorships. Or more, re and more recently, Patreon. Yeah. Uh, I really, no, I, I went down this rabbit hole a little bit yesterday because I was curious about, like, how viewership works. And, like, kind of trying to figure out, like, to some extent, because my channel's not, like, gargantuan or anything, but, like collectively across its thousands of videos how big of a shark am i <laughs> and, how big of uh, a shark are you jeff bezos <laughs> what does this mean shark i have a very i have a very easy ah. to remember viewership because it's almost ex it's almost exclusively always right around a million views per month and i was like okay what does that mean like conceptually like how much viewership is that compared to other channels it's so, like I, I watch nerd sync who has like a significantly larger subscriber base following, but t but complains about being in decline on a regular basis in their videos. And I looked at his his channel on Social Blade, and his channel has 500,000 views per month lately. And then I'm like, okay, let's dig down, let's dig a little deeper, let's see how this goes. Like, okay, so Lindsay Ellis, somebody who like literally has a company, like multiple people work for her because of how much money they make. And I'm like, how does that work? And I'm like, oh god, it's all sponsorship and Patreon, because Lindsay Ellis only has 50% more viewership than I do per month. <laughs> It's a uh, only 1.5 million oh, wow. right now, and I'm like, oh, I wasn't expecting that to be as close as it is. No, that shows the, you how much like a strong Patreon following. The numbers are complicated and, and not straightforward. I'm very work, confused yeah. about how some people are like, like it's very confusing to watch people and be like, I don't understand how much money they're making or not making. Like yeah. it's very confusing. And similarly, H Bomber guy has double the viewership of Lindsay Ellis, so he has three times the viewership that I do, which is a lot. But, but not but nearly he, as much as I but thought. But doesn't he only make... He, he makes videos, like, very far and yeah. few, few and far between. So I'm confused about that, shows how much you too. can't rely on view count and the, ad, and the ads you get per view count. Although I think there might... I've heard there might be things where larger channels might have, like, more or something. Like, more... They might make more money because they might have better ads or something. But it's still, like... Ad revenue is trash. <laughs> and if you have to rely entirely on viewership, then the, the secret is to be... Uh, a, a spammy, uh, being a spammy genre like Let's Plays or like vlogs yeah, or something. Yeah, the lowest of the low. Yeah, I'm trash. <laughs> <laughs> I have another teaching for you. And you're, and you're tough enough to not be broken. I need you to take me to the Everdoor. What already? You are equipped to do so now. You don't need to say more until we get there. Peace. Quiet. That is good practice. It starts now. <laughs> I don't like, I don't like this dog. I, I don't feel like I, like, what is the backstory of this dog? I don't feel like I know anything about this person. They hate children, which, like, I get it. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, okay. And the, But then they have a job with children, which was certainly a move to make. I feel like it'd be very difficult to be a teacher and not eventually <laughs> hate children. Yeah. Um, sweet. Just, Eggs. Egg Being in any job long enough, Egg you slowly work. just learn to resent the, the mechanics of it and the people that you have to deal with at it. It's just like, um, no, I mean, doing anything repetitively, and if you're like the kind of person that I am, you you just like are like very cynical, and so little mm -hmm. things remind you about how like shitty everyone is, and those yeah. things add up over time. No, I've been, I've been reading a like, remember the uh. That were like the uh, the billionaires eating. Shirt I'm gonna feed I, this cow cheese. Yeah, you know, there's that, that, that like eating billionaire shirt with the wolf and the dining table and everything. Yes, like, that's from uh, I am not a wolf, which is a Twitter parody account where he just types in caps lock about like usually vague like it's usually like critiques of capitalism or office culture, but also from the pretense of like also I'm hiding the fact that I'm a large carnivore that devours people. <laughs> and it's a uh, I like, very specific I like aesthetic. themed Twitter accounts. I think they're very fun. I like, but uh, he put out a book that's called I Am Not a Wolf, which I've been reading, and it's a choose your own adventure book where you're off, where you're navigating office culture, and it's uh, <laughs> that's awful. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, that's scary. He, you could you could you clearly tell it comes from a place of deep resentment. <laughs> 
it's a very it's it's full of very biting statements about people and uh, the, the, the kind of people that thrive in those environments and the kind of people that it kind of like creates via like its incentive structures and so on and it's just like it's a lot you know you know i kind of i i really liked and appreciated for that like a very similar reason was a gretzko yeah because as an adult who like ha- has worked in like the adult world you see the characters that are represented and you're like i know oh, i know no. all of these people yeah and they're all awful and it, it is a very cute fun show and it's like fun to watch the but it's very gets fucking social like he gets security from 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 like, threatening to the, the the litigation on everything like he makes oh yeah oh, oh yeah there was the uh you talk about the the meerkat I was thinking of the meerkat. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, he, he just like specifically like bombs onto a... the biggest bully, and then like just kind of like gets drippings from there, well, like fucking he, the, he, trickle down. He's respect. an HR person's worst nightmare. Like he complains about everything to the point where it's like to not address everything would be an HR issue. But like the yeah. things he's complaining about are like arguably. Oh, you not... mean the angry guy? Yeah, the meerkat. The, the meerkat's the one that was like mm, right. I think. I think the ye- the yes man is the meerkat. Oh fuck! Then what is the other guy supposed to be? I'm not. I was thinking of the guy that, that freaks out over yeah, emails. Yeah, yeah, no, and no, no. Stuff. That that was a deeply visceral experience because I've encountered multiple people like that guy, and it it was upsetting. <laughs> yeah, no, because <laughs> that he, was the most upsetting part of all of a Gretzko. Well, because he's just was like, that character. oh, you dare talk to me like that? I'm gonna tell on you. Like, but he's like a narc about everything. Yeah, but, but also just... like the like you're on constant tiptoes around this person and and, and like. You're afraid to interact with them because every single thing it is like a comes it, with the threat now. That it's it's going to have so like hard to and tiptoe like, around yeah. HR issues. Like as a manager person, and, and like I'm very the, aware. In the moment, he'll like it'll be like things are okay or something, or they might act slightly different about something. But then you get like this, this like yeah, like this ten page letter about like the offenses that you've done as a person, and it's like that was a deeply upsetting fucking episode. So I, <laughs> and okay, entire arc. So like at my place of work, right? Which I will never name specifically. I there are, there are people who I have caught hiding in the bathroom. Like they'll go hide in the bathroom. They'll go on Instagram and they'll post things while in the bathroom. And I will I will literally know that they're in there because I'll go in to actually use the bathroom and I'll see them hiding in the bathroom stall. Right? I cannot say anything about this because that in itself could be an HR issue if I like <laughs> claim like oh you're using the bathroom too much. But I can guarantee a hundred thousand percent because I literally watch them post on Instagram in real time while I'm on my lunch <laughs> that they are hiding in the bathroom. But there is nothing I can do or say about this because that is an HR issue. <laughs> I'm the person at my workplace that has to remind my, my upper management that every, like don't say anything about that. That's an HR nope. issue. Like I'm keeping everyone out of trouble because I'm too aware of how easy it is to like... that HR is a lightning rod for drama? Oh, very much. <laughs> <laughs> like somebody could literally not be doing work, and it's so hard to f- you. It's so hard to fire someone. You can they can just literally be doing nothing, and you you can't fire them for that. It has to be for an act, like some sort of actual reason. It's so difficult. Stealing a coke. Somebody could not show up for five days. Like you have to you have to do job abandonment. It's very difficult. You could show up. For, you could like not show up for two days. Show up for one day. Not show up for two days. Show up for one day. And all you can get is like a write up. We can't fire you for that because you have to do it for a certain number of days in a row to consider it job abandonment. Hmm. It's so much. It's so terrible. The secret is to do what they did to me when they didn't like, want me around. No, I know what they did to you because we've done conti- that. Continually reduce my hours every week until I just don't want to show up anymore. You should have accused and them then, of and discriminating then, against you. And then you. be all like, "Oh, why, why are you, uh, why are you leaving?" <laughs> and give this like interview. Oh. I almost cried. I think I kind of did cry. It was like the, uh... So I had to, like, walk around with my boss around the, uh... Like, around the store, like, talking about why I was leaving. When I put in my two weeks. You're not obligated to. Yeah. But, uh... But, while, but like, it was like, even though I, there was nothing, like... Even though I didn't think I was doing anything wrong, it was, like, a weirdly stressful episode to go through. So I really... I was, like, deeply unhappy about the process of, like having to, like, say to someone's face that I'm quitting a job. That was, like, really fucking unpleasant. So, you know, like, I I, I attempted to quit my job, but I got convinced to stay because I'm... They, like... It, there were things that were bargaining chips. I was pleaded. <laughs> I, was high, pleaded I was pleaded. You're so with. high value that you were like, we will break this place for you. They were like, we will transfer people for you. We will do whatever you want. And I was like, I don't want any of that, like... 
but any, but I tried to quit, and that I thought about that for like a solid week. I was so stressed about thinking about how I had to tell someone I was quitting. Yeah. Like that in itself is like that. That actually, I did. I did cry while I was trying to quit. It's like this process of like admitting. It's like failure I feel, you feel in guilty in some way. Yeah. Like you're conditioned exclusively to have guilty emotions tied to that, and so it was like I'm like trying to like have this conversation while walking around the store and trying not to like like like, like my, my voice crack and shit. You <laughs> know, like trying to like hold back this weird like emotions that don't make sense really. but, but you it's know but, but we appreciate people like you more than people who quit and just are like fine i don't care that 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 mm. you know like at least you were like felt guilty about it which means that you probably were a better worker than the people that just like quit and just like don't show up for five days meanwhile they're part, they're like part of the reason i'm quitting because it was all like this thing where i couldn't juggle being in college anymore with doing the job because it was my schedule was getting too chaotic too difficult to manage and like the uh and like trying to like add this on top of it was getting worse and worse but to some extent like i was basically explaining to the person i was partially responsible for making my life worse why i was at a, like a breaking point at doing the job anymore and it's like it's like wait a minute you're the last person i should have to tell this to you know what you did <laughs> well just yeah just tell me you, you have you're having problems juggling it like that's also, a very also working good retail excuse. once every other week because they fucked with your schedule so much is hell because you spend half of every shift trying to figure out how they changed the store since the last time you were there which is like you like you are literally just as at odds you're just as capable as like your own customers at finding things at some point because they they, they just leave you loose because yeah like best buy would just rearrange the whole fucking store oh, no every store does that it's, it's fucking hell and they, they do nothing to help their cut their actual employees do their job in any way it's like how my job training was that I watched like a PowerPoint presentation for like a few hours, most of which didn't cover several parts of my department. And then they would just be like frustrated with me for not knowing how to do like car stereos. Because I was in portable electronics, which is that was video games and uh, and like MP3 players and all of media. So all CDs and all movies. And it was cameras and it was car stereos all in one department how is that about portable i guess that's portable it's the catch-all for everything else because there's a computers department there's a home entertainment center department there's, there's appliances. An appliances and there's the phone people that just sit at that one desk those people scare me the most the rest of the store besides geek squad i guess is just portable electronics uh and it's hell because you have to cro you have to know how to do like six different things and they just don't actually train you for most of it so th there's a whole process to figuring out what car stereos work in what cars and like what and like it's like it's it's fucking asinine because like the people that actually know how to do the car stuff are in a garage and nobody can access them because they're working on the actual cars and installing car stereos and stuff like that best buy so, has a place like that yes <laughs> It's like, it's, it's really weird. So like, what they should have is the garage people should have a fucking counter where you can access yeah. them because they know what they're doing. But instead they leave it to the people whose also job is to like, organize the DVDs. <laughs> and it's like, what the fuck? But then like the ultimate crime Best Buy did to me was uh, in order to compete, they wanted to compete with GameStop and they introduced uh, used games and stuff like that. And part of what they did there is that they divided gaming into its own section and nobody talked to me about it. So I didn't get a chance to apply in any way for being, uh, to, to, to specifically being in gaming. So in, so what happened is I became a portable electronics... To, uh, you would be terrible at that. What are you talking <laughs> I about? I became a portable electronics worker that lost the primary department that I'm best at. Because <laughs> that no longer was my department. So I wasn't supposed to go over there anymore. But like, I was, well, that's the thing I was most knowledgeable about. Because you're only knowledgeable about anything at Best Buy if you brought that knowledge in when you got there. Because they don't fucking train you. They expect you to leave in no, three dude. months. They don't give a fuck. The entire minimum wage, like, like fucking high school student and college student industry is, like, hell. Because they don't even try to make it a good job for you. I remember working at Sears and we haven't, like, basically, there's so short staff. They're like, can you cover the appliance department? Or not the appliance, like, the, <laughs> like, the, like the power tools. And I'm yeah. like, I'm like sitting at the power tool counter and some guy's like, can you explain to me the difference between this and this? And I'm like, ha ha ha, no. Like, I, I, I had to pull the he he he, I'm just, I'm just a silly girl card because yeah. I don't know anything about power tools. I'm literally covering someone's lunch. I had to be like, I'm covering someone's lunch. Yeah. I'm really sorry. Let's go read the box together. Yeah. Like, they I'm walked over and I like reread the box together. You're like, I I'm covering somebody else's thing. Like, just. Don't, don't they train you and everything? And I said, haha, no. <laughs> but and yeah, you're not supposed to just constantly throw your own business under the table. 
but it's, it's really hard not to sometimes when it's like, yeah, they didn't train me how to do this entire field, and also all of our computers basically don't work. So, oh, you, oh, we want to look this thing up. Okay. Pretend, it's, pretend, it's gonna, pretend. This is going to take about 15 minutes. Yeah. How do you spell Wiz Khalifa? <laughs> <laughs> Real conversation I had. First time I ever heard of Wiz Khalifa was somebody asking if the CD was, uh, where the CD was, and it wasn't out yet. Is it W I Z K H A L I F A? I worked there. Or is it W H I Z? I worked there in 2010 and 11. It's been a while. Skinny legend like Wiz Khalifa. But like I didn't. That's all I know about Wiz Khalifa. It was a combination of like not knowing. Is that he's a skinny like, legend? I guess. Every page at the Best Buy computer takes like five minutes to load when you're trying to look up anything at all. But I also couldn't spell the name, and I don't think they could either. <laughs> like, well, this is a problem. Whoa! What the fuck? Just the sheep just jumped sheep. past us. We are here. I know I've been working you hard. Why? Lately. Yeah, I hope you do understand. Everyone needs a little bit of discipline in their lives. For some, for someone who takes others to the afterlife, you're holding on surprisingly well. I do have one last request for you. It won't be an easy one, considering what we've been talking about. Will you make the journey with me? You should have said what you just said no. no. That's funny. <laughs> Thank you. Um that dog has little neck rolls like he like Kiki my dog gets. Yeah, it's a fleshy like She looks like an old lady. Hair. I love it when she like has her little weird neck rolls. Yeah, once you start running out of uh spirits to fare, they uh they really you really start making rapid progress with each one because they get your like undivided attention. You're like you start realizing that each of these quests could probably get banged out in a couple hours. Well, like a uh, fucking I can't water because I'm in dog mode. Uh, a toll just left us. Like a toll never we never like rode a toll to the on the yeah. thing. We never got a frog, uh, constellation. No, no frog ending. Why did this happen? <laughs> So you were my first student in this place. I don't think you deserve a passing grade. I won't hold it against myself. We failed this person too! <laughs> and neither should you. A lesson you should learn from this. If life is hard, you should not be hard you should not be hard to it. People have the ability to change. You have the ability to change. You can shape how you want to be. I know that is sometimes tradition. The passing of a legacy. A token at the end. An heirloom. Something for you to remember my time here. I do not wish to give you one. However, I have prepared something greater. Tasks and requests from the great beyond. No. That you will receive. No, fuck you. A useless object will not make you think of me, but lessons will. No, I don't want to think of you. You've been the worst passenger. Like, <laughs> what, what progress- Even worse than the lion? Yeah, no, I hate this dog more than the lion. Whoa. What a pretentious asshole this dog is. <laughs> What have you done to improve yourself? Like, why are you here, you fuck up? Hopefully this will all be over <laughs> soon. Yeah, hopefully you'll be gone soon. Get off my fucking boat. You don't get a, you don't get a cathartic ending from me. Don't mm -hmm. try to tell me I don't get a cathartic ending from you. You mean nothing to me. Let me think of something. Okay. I'll just say it. I just want to say, truly... From teacher to student, I am proud. It means nothing to me. You did go to work. It means nothing to me. I, I, I'm so mad. I'm really salty about this stupid dog. You've got a failing grade. Good job. <laughs> you were never supposed to pass after all. It was a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, yeah. It's like the tuning exams it's from Naruto. <laughs> it's like, no one was supposed to pass. The test was too hard. You were supposed to cheat. I love that episode. Mm -hmm. Kobayashi Maru. Oh, we already talked about that. Kobayashi Maru? Yeah, in the context of the hot dog eating contest. <laughs> oh. That's the unwinnable Star Trek test. Except you're not supposed to win it. You're not supposed to cheat. You're supposed to not win. And it's supposed to be a lesson about unwinnable situations. And how, and how, what you, how you react to them, essentially. Like, it's a test for captains. But Kirk cheated and won anyway. <laughs> It, was he allowed to? No. It's a simulation that's supposed to be unwinnable, and he, like, cheated at it, essentially. I think they, I think it happens both in the show and the movie. Do they like say, the do movie. they give him, like, mad props for it, or are they just, like, they just get, get mad at him? Um, is it, I think is it's, it like, wow, I think it's mostly impressed. presented as a character moment in that, for Kirk, it's that he doesn't accept uh, uh, no-win situations. Mm. 
Which I guess is an alright characteristic for a captain. Yeah, no, that's actually pretty good. I've been thinking. When we get there, maybe, just maybe, we can hug. We'll see how I feel. I don't want to hug you. Ah, uh, but look how, you f look how floofy it didn't is. didn't earn it Admittedly, from me. Admittedly, it's like a weird bush. A <laughs> weird bush. Huh? Hug my shrub. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, baby. <laughs> This is the only time I will let you. Come on. Why is it for you? Oh, they have to bend so far down. They like sat down. You can see their legs sticking out. The knees. Yeah, she's like a greyhound, I think. Yeah, she like contextualized herself around the idea that she exists only to improve other people and that they'll inherently resent her for it. So then she emotionally distances herself from that dynamic and just accepts it you and embraces it. You improve other people in a way that is pleasant. I'm just saying. A lot of people do. Yeah, but all these characters are deeply flawed. <laughs> You don't have to ride someone's ass to be like a good teacher to them. Like I'm just That's a long ass neck. They're gonna resent you and they're <laughs> you, gonna like learn nothing. You are all neck. I mean at least they weren't whiplash. That's what I, basically they were. They were basically that <laughs> what's that guy's name again? You always remember his name and I never JK remember Simmons. his name. JK Simmons from Whiplash. But but the thing about that movie is he got like weird, Burning people. He got weirdly, he says what they're all thinking. <laughs> he got weirdly obsessed with his teacher. Like like it became like a weird like uh What's that called? Um, Whoa. Hostage situation. Are we down to one? Yes, we are. It's what, just wait, what, the nerd. What flower did the... Our oh, we missed it. Fuck up teacher yet. You're a bad teacher. Fuck you. <laughs> it's a spirit flower. Uh, it's this one. Good teachers have patience. You it's asshole. the... Uh, a rough piece of cypress. It's yeah, of not, course. It's like, it, it's of like course not even a flower, is. right? Of course it is. Like these are like all flowers except the mushroom, I guess. But, like that's just like a bush. Well, you know, <laughs> that, that's actually it's coarse and it gets everywhere. That's kind of a cool idea because that's what people make bonsais out of, and you shape oh. those. Like cypress is also those really tall trees you see that separate people's yards. They're really, really tall ones. You know, hmm. the ones that are just like really weird bushes that go right into the sky. Those are cypress trees. I use cypress mulch for my animal bedding. Yeah. Well, it's down to just this guy. What does he want? We gotta finish his D&D. &D. Is, this, is this our last episode? Is this like the end? The end? I forgot how close we were. What, what, what's what's Lily's deal spooked. though? Was there something about li Lily? Lily? Meet Lily at the hummingbird shrine during nighttime. So we have to do that. Come but down I to think... the hummingbird. What, what if, we're gonna be so lonely. Yeah, it's just us. And I don't like like this is like I kind of it's so empty. We're turning into a we're, we're becoming like a mom after all the all the kids like fly the coop. That was like our and little hedgehog. Like, what do I do with all this space that's empty? I was worried about um, parents that make their kids their whole life for that exact reason. I was thinking like, what are they gonna do? Yeah. I, I well, like and like it's hard to be a good parent without doing that. At least for a while. I think I think a good I think a, 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 a having being an independent person can make you a good parent too because like your your kid can see that you like are a multifaceted human being, you know. Like I think I think like yeah. you kind of have to be a little bit independent. But you have it to makes like, you, a better you kind of have to destroy you your life and then rebuild it. To be able to do both, there's a whole period really where you parent. really can't do anything else with yourself. Dude, that stresses me out so much. Oh yeah. Whenever, like, when I go back and forth on like if I ever want kids, that is the one thing that I always think about. Is is like, it restructures your whole brain. Yeah. What if you're not the same person? That's so stressful. <laughs> and it's like I have hobbies. I want to do things too. Like, yeah. Not even just that part, but just the, the responsibility necessarily restructures your life, even if nothing happened to your brain. Because it's just so much of a thing. Responsibility I'm really it's good like about. It's like a dog that takes way more, like it has way more concessions you have to make to take care of it. While also having the responsibility of whether or not it's like turning into a good person or not. And whether or not it's going to hate you. But also it's like suicidally stupid. Like it will just well, like he, that, try to eat like everything Kiki. dangerous and like stick things in electricity spots and wander into traffic. Yeah, babies are pretty useless. <laughs> they're they're, they're little on. fuck ups. 
But like dogs are so much lower stakes and they're still like it feels like too much of a responsibility of like a like a like a, a change to my entire life to get one. I can just cook milk. I'm, like, cook just, milk. I'm just like that's just a fucking lie. You could just borrow mine. <laughs> that's the thing is, it's, it's oh, like, I, I, I could just be already. a dog uncle. There's four in this house, and none of them are mine. I made hot milk. It's pretty good. <laughs> this new recipe, guys. Hot milk, important. Very good. Very good job, everyone. But do. What if I just cook cheese? I'm gonna just cook. I don't think I just. I maybe I'm missing things. I'm not cooking like individual items just by themselves. Maybe. What, just just gonna, melted cheese. Yeah. I want. I want nachos. Like you can make yaki mochi if you just cook rice alone. <laughs> I learned new term today. Let's use it repeatedly so that it is remembered. <laughs> I like how in uh, yaki. Fuck. in in Dementia <laughs> Twenty One, there's a whole plot point where they point out how often old people in Japan die from eating mochi. Yes, it is, it is like one of the. Apparently, it is a very significant cause of death for old people. And there's an entire conspiracy where they're trying to murder their elders to inherit their wealth by feeding them too much mochi. And so there's an entire training course for I'm, trying I'm, I'm to. I'm basically like, chewing mochi well yeah. enough to be able to not get choked buy it because yeah, there's an entire mochi training course i love that bizarre fucking book it is very unique to i mean not just to japan but it's very much ingrained in japan's culture that like daughter-in-laws have to care for their mother-in-laws and they hate each other like i've seen that in so many media in america it's just not really something that happens very much i mean hating your mother-in-law is supposed to be like a funny thing but there it's like every yeah. daughter-in-law care cares for every mother-in-law and they they like make it a point to bully each other to death like on both sides. Jesus Christ. And in fact, the paranoia agent had that whole that whole plot point about it when they're telling stories okay. about each other. And there's the one where it's like the the Go the, on, go on. She's just like won't stop bitching about her daughter's cooking and it gets to the point where the daughter like wishes for a little sucker to come up to kill her mother in law and it <laughs> happens. Like I'm just I'm just saying it. Like it it's it's some I'm so like that sounds horrible. <laughs> I'm kind of glad that it's not as much in of my, a, uh... our culture here. <laughs> You just reminded me that in my in my uh, in my folder I have of a uh, like temp like or like uh, like placeholder essays or whatever. This is one that says that's just titled "I don't understand Paranoia Agent," <laughs> <laughs> with like the goal of just rewatching Paranoia Agent until I have something to say about it that's like more beyond just the surface read of what it of what it shows you. So I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? In particular, I'm I'm ch I'm challenged by the fact that like it has a the second half takes a weird turn that is like not inherently satisfying to the trajectory of like the sh what the show was going necessarily but when i find something kind of like it's like the annihilation of Beastars thing a little bit where it's when something like is like a little frustrating and a little unsatisfying sometimes when you go when you like go back and redo visit it a bunch of times you then like Oh fuck! I get it now. Like you have like a clicking moment where you get what's going on. Like there's a lot of people that are frustrated by season two of B Stars, and I'm literally working on like an entire read of the season that like shows why it's actually like a great culmination of the of the themes. But it's only when you're reading it that way, so it's like a lot. So one of these days I'll just like start pinching Paranoid Agent probably. Do it. I can tell it like. I don't want like I don't want to bother everyone here with my I'll tell I I have a definite and very solid interpretation of that entire show, but I have watched it like a handful of times. Yeah. But but like, uh, no. When I was a kid, I was like, I understand like I relate to this enough to be able to figure out like I feel I feel it I feel it I relate to aspects of this, and some I think I think like being able to understand sometimes some sometimes it's easier if there's something that you relate to specifically. Yeah. Where it's like, you might not have the perspective that is necessary to understand it on your first go. Like, like I know, like, I know, like, like, Poon Poon was really weird mm -hmm. to understand, but, like, I understood it the first time I read it. I was like, I totally understand this character, like, immensely. Or, like, uh, yeah, I don't know, there's like, a whole bunch of things like that. Like, oh, it's really obvious to me, but it's, like, really hard for other people. They're just like, I don't... Yeah. It just depends on the life you live, what things are important to you, maybe... Yeah, give another shot if, if you dare. I'm, I'm surprised you let me move it to you the first time. How are you enjoying our new service? The gang in marketing has a real swell idea. They thought, why well, spend all this time making meals and parts? Why not just assemble them for our customers? We actually took our motto to heart. Productivity becomes our main focus. 
Anyway, Fiat Rama has been saving people so much money, no one in their right mind would have to would have to, to unsubscribe from our incredible service. Especially with our expensive canceling fee. Oh man. Ugh. I think that they made that I, I know like like a while back they started cracking down on that because there was too many like really predatory subscription companies. Um oh, yeah. one of which I think was Fabletics, which is like a um it's like Julianne Huff's uh like yoga pant company or like it, it's like one of those <gasps> wait do we get something what does this mean it's what we're here for nighttime oh I yeah i thought it was nighttime oh right it's our annual colmar visit at a toll's house wait, wait oh where's a toll is a toll probably the guy that's standing up oh my goodness wow the whole family is there except me look at uncle toll at the grill, obviously. Look at your face. You're covered from head to toe in barbecue sauce. Oh, you're, you're the baby. You're a baby. So Ew. it makes it more okay. <laughs> you're not just an adult. <laughs> People let you get that way. <laughs> <laughs> and it's adorable. Keith disagrees. Mom <laughs> is beaming. She's so young, but so tired. That's sad. Look at her eyes. Those are the eyes of someone who's not sleeping. That's a mother. Nice job, Stella. Keeping mom awake all night with your baby tears. I'm actually happy tears. mom's sleeping right now. She needs the rest. Plus, I get to talk to you all alone. And have a drink. Alright, let's turn to another page. Something from the middle. Another picture when we were living in France. Gwen is in this one. We're riding our bikes together. You and Gwen would always outpace me. Leaving me behind. I guess no one wants their friend's little sister running around them. When I was young, I admired her so much. Remember, she would disappear for months on end and show up out of nowhere. I thought she was so bold and amazing. Mom and Dad loved her. She was some kind of parent whisperer. I guess our home felt like her home. Oh, there's a postcard on the next page. It's from Japan! Hmm. Yep, they're definitely like at, we're like in a coma. Oh yeah, for sure. Or we were, at least. And we're dead and she's, now. she's, like, reading these things to us. She's literally paging through these, ma these, uh... This is a lot. Urugawa! Nord Sea Pier. I'm at Hummingburg? Yeah. Is Nord Sea in the top corner up here? Nordvela? Lundbeck? North, North Sea. sea. That's uh, what we needed. Bus is over there, so I'll go this way. It's like a multi-stage memory test where I have to like try to remember where it is to find it on the map, but also the fastest way to get there is to go to a bus station. So then when I go to the bus station, I then have to remember again where the location was I was going to when we get to the seal, and hopefully didn't have, didn't forget in like the the couple of minutes since then. It's like whoops, 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 whoops. Just, just, just cook yogurt. Let's see what happens yeah. if we just cook yogurt. I'm experimenting. But yeah, the more I look at B stars, the more I see it as a mistake to see it to, to to only view it literally. Like it just doesn't. It's just not a narrative that works that way. I thought, like, it's not its point. <laughs> it, it like amazes me when there are people who will watch like something, you know, like okay, like like you, you and I watched watched like Green Knight. The other day. Yeah. I imagine watching. I would imagine some per person watching it and being like, "What a shitty night." That that that's didn't lame. Kill anybody. Wh why did that happen? Like, I don't get it. Yeah. But it's like obvious. Like obviously, these all are all metaphorical things. Like I, I don't know. Like some people just don't even pick up on that part where they're just like they think everything's oh, yeah. literal. They're like, "Is that talking? Is this a dream? Is this this?" And it's like, no, these are all metaphors. Mm -hmm. Or it's like the. uh Little Red Riding Hood stories and stuff like that, and I'm like these, uh, these all have context <laughs> and subtext. It's not just about a, a little girl with a red hood that goes into the woods, and then a monster's there, and then that's it. <laughs> I told you I watched that really great movie with uh, um, Reese Witherspoon when she was a little, little, little baby. <laughs> baby and uh, Witherspoon. that was like an allegory. It was like it was it was like a it was an allegory of Little Red Riding Hood, but it had to do with like a basically like a sexual predator. 
But it was so good. Yeah, but but I, AKA just the original allegory of, red, well, of red, Little Red Riding Hood. Yeah, but with, with human beings, yeah. you know. But it's just, I imagine somebody watching that and not picking up the Red Riding Hood part. That would be funny to me. I'd be like, mm-hmm. this is very much, this is very much Red Riding Hood. But someone else, like, I imagine, like, they got to the very end, they're like, wait a minute, was that Red Riding Hood? Mm-hmm. And it's like, no kidding. That was the whole point. Womp, Silly. Womp. Or like, or like, um, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Like, that's the Odyssey, yeah. you know? And if, and like, even if you never have read the Odyssey, you might watch that and be like, I, I, under, I feel like this is in reference to something, but I don't know what. Oh, okay, yeah, there's like a whole subgenre of, uh, there's like a whole subgenre of movies that are like adaptations of Shakespeare, but not named after the oh, Shakespeare. Oh, like Lion King? <laughs> or 10 Things I Hate About You. Yeah, the taming. They, they talk about taming of the shrew in that. Yeah. Like, they're like, oh, we're reading it in school, you know? If w- w- fucking cheat codes, if you want to be a clever, clever, smarty pants uh, video essayist, is that whenever the people in the in the movie bring up like a book or something or are holding a book or something, look at check look into what it's about. <laughs> it might because they, they're they they're they're just revealing the themes to you. <laughs> they're, but, they're, but, they're not being that coy with it. But don't but don't write an essay about Heath Ledger and expect to get an A plus on your. On yeah. your essay about taming of the shrew, okay? The fires of Tondor are lit. <laughs> Woo! The beacons are lit. Tondor light calls for aid. Oop! There you go. But yeah, the uh, that was fucking. I got some mileage out of that during Annihilation because they, she just holds a book, and I'm like, oh wow, it's the themes. <laughs> there it <laughs> oh, is. Oh hey. Nah. <laughs> Because these, these stories want you to understand them, but they're not going to sit there and fucking end with a book report. I hope not. As the second fire of Tondor is lit, clamors of exultation spread throughout the vast expanses of the kingdom. The Chosen One has arrived! She who bears the light will help us all! Glory to the, the commander, glory to Halar! Your heart lifts by such grandiose acclamation, your soul irradiates with serenity. But your mind remains watchful and perceptive. You know that, stirred by an upheaval that marks their near demise. The orcs of the Shadow Steel Clan must be closing on your position. And, lo and behold, roll initiative! 20! Critical! Without a moment of hesitation, you jump into the fray. Taken by surprise, the approaching phalanx of orc fighters, you ready yourself to mow through them with deftness and style. Fight! Dum, bum, 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 bum. Falling with style. Every now and then, and you encounter a dungeon master that's just like really into it, and they can just just spew narration like that. And I'm like, I don't know how the fuck you do that, dude. <laughs> how like, the hell? I would have to actually get into it, but that'd be pretty fucking good. Yeah. I love a, uh, I love like over dramatic. Oh, what, what, wait, shit. what button is it again? It's the uh, uh, right trigger, but it has to, you have to, it has to load back up. So if you just did it, it, it doesn't work. I just forgot how to do it entirely. Uh, I, I just, need I, one like too. When it got to the lighthouse, it just stood there until you did it. <laughs> uh-huh. The, uh... No, down, you, I down, think, I think you would like D&D. And it's also not nearly as complicated as people say it is. It, mostly because the dungeon master has can just do all the heavy lifting for everybody else. I get the impression that it just depends on how, like, dickish the people are that you're playing with. <laughs> because, oh, like, if they oh, like, yeah. are sticklers you have, about like, things, really then it's no fun. If you have really irritating people that are just there to, to do the RPG... M- progression mechanics and like be annoying about the rules then they can like bring the whole table down but at its best D&D is actually basically just like a collaborative improv group setting that's just grounded in reality and has stakes because it has rules and so like the mechanical rules make the game it stops the game from being like the childhood thing where you're like well, I have a special laser. Well, I've got an anti-laser force field. Well, I've got an anti-force field glasses. Like, the, the dumb bullshit that people make up when they're, like, imagine playing as, like, five-year-olds. Like, D&D is a grounded universe with rules, so it becomes, like, well, I want to do this. And then it's like, all right, well, let's see how that turns out. And it'll be, like, a combination of, like, the scenario and, like, your what your stats are and a dice roll in, like, the Fallout kind of way. Or, like, the or like any, any like, video game you would see with skill checks. Like that kind of setup, and that that just make, becomes it really fun. And usually, like one of the like Disco Elysium really embraced this, where like what's good about role playing uh, systems is that both the success and failure states are interesting as as options. And so you you don't, it's not, it doesn't even feel like a, that bad of a thing when you lose at things, because then you have to like deal with the thing that fucked up. I think it's I think it's like it can be lots of fun if allowed for room for like creative interpretation of events. 
I just, I just, like I said, I just imagine people just being like, yeah. well, actually, and it's like, like, no, let me add elaborate backstory <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> like, uh, what is it? In our D&D campaign, right. one of our party members got hung to death for crimes. <laughs> But I couldn't. But my character was a, I, like, it was it, my character was a tabaxi, which is just a literal cat person defined by their curiosity, like, like the like the adage goes. And so, I just needed to figure out what the fuck was going on because I didn't understand why he did what he did because it seemed completely illogical and insane to me. And so, what I did is because you know how like a gallows is like a dropped floor, mm -hmm. so there's like a stage. So I snuck under the stage and reached up into his pockets of the of his corpse through the hole in the stage because where he was hanging dead to like search his pockets for any kind of explanation or understanding of what the fuck he was up to or why he did that because it didn't make any sense to me and like it's just like a video game one lady dude like this is just a weird random like you, like the player has to come up with the, the goal of what they want to do and then you have the dice rolls involved in doing that and it's like okay how's you, how good is your stealth check and how's it gonna turn out and like it became this like performance check because when i came back I got all the way there without anything going wrong, but when I came back for, out from under the gallows, there was a guard right there. And so I had to, like, improv this, like... I had to do, like, a, a performance check in the moment and, like, come up with the, the clever thing of what I was going to do to cover up what I was doing, which is that I had to, like... Pr I had to pretend that I was tying my shoes. So, like, I wasn't, like, coming out from under the stage. I was just crouched there because I was tying my shoes. And the dumbest, most absurd part about this is that I wasn't wearing shoes. <laughs> Because I was a cat, a cat. So I'm a cat person, but the uh, <laughs> but my performance check was so good that they didn't even notice I wasn't wearing shoes. That, <laughs> and, and that is pretty good. And it's like, and, they, and it's like, you can vaguely see how in some RPGs or video games, if they came up with the incredibly specific scenario, something like this might happen, maybe. But the, what's good about d d uh, tabletop situations is that you could just come up with them yourself. And and you don't and if, you, and if you're not being especially creative or reactive that day, like you're in a party of like five people that are just coming up with shit to do or reactions to things. So like, what's why the dungeon master's rule job is so hard is they have to have such an in-depth understanding of the game it's, itself, or at least know where to check whenever they have to check how something works. But also they have to be able to like improv this stuff because my first D and D session ever was when I was like 15 I went to like the back room of a D of a tabletop store with some high school friends and well one high school friend and a bunch of his friends so it's like kind of a alien situation there and uh like this guy just had a plan for what the story was like it was like written like book oh that's so <laughs> and nice. it, he was so mad that people were deviating from it because he because as a kid he didn't understand what D, D was and what it is because yeah you you have to, it's like it's like that fucking all that rattling off narration like you have to be able to just improvise and react because like you got like five anywhere from like two to five people that are just gonna like just throw quarters on the train tracks <laughs> and derail the train <laughs> like and it's all gonna come down and you have to come up with something else to do like one of my D, &D campaigns i was playing privately like not, not for youtube it ended I think uh, partly because one player was being a huge dickhead on a regular basis and making it not fun for the dungeon master that was new at it, but also we kind of derailed it in a really intimidating way where we decided that the because we just got a we did we we delivered a dragon egg to somebody, and then at the and while we were doing it we realized what it was so we then planned a heist to steal it <laughs> to steal it back so we we're gonna go back in and steal it after getting our reward and. It's like, oh boy, this will be a fun session to figure out. We never played again. Yeah, <laughs> 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 didn't want to deal with it. All right, sorry. Dialogue. You, you wrote yourself in, in a complicated situation. <laughs> you, you, you war of the worlds yourself. It's intimidating. Uh, that's that's why at the end of the world, the wor worlds, the 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 bacteria kills all the aliens because he didn't mm -hmm. know how to fucking write himself out of the corner because he made the aliens too good. That's really funny. They didn't stand a chance. What remains of their shattered dark armors is probably blown away by the swift northern wind. Commander, you are victorious once again. And this time, Gomgoda couldn't oppose your strength and was heroically slain. Goma, Goma, Goda. Goda, Goda, Goda. The orcs of the Shadowsteel clan shall henceforth dread your might, Commander. Cutting, they will have to prove to even attempt to find you. But let's not dawdle a second more. Your goal is within your grasp, Commander. Let's set sail again onto the ultimate fire fire of Tondor. The fires of Tondor are lit. Can't get over it. <laughs> I just got a star. 
Oh. What? Two letters from Alana. Alana. Who's Alana again? Oh fuck! I forgot she gave <laughs> she gave us homework after she, she died. She gave us homework. What I, a bitch! I love how in character she is. She's great. A treasure map for a lost bounty. 220, 167. It's gonna be a fucking death trap. I don't think that's from her. Okay, I was gonna say, is, is, is oh, it a wait. trick? No, I forgot to actually go to the map. <laughs> what, what did you? We're just, we're just oh. where we were. <laughs> Let me see what, what I cooked on accident. Maybe it's something new. Fuck, I went in the wrong door. Joke's on you. No! Do you remember the numbers? Oh, I thought it was gonna be like off the map. Nope, it's up. I think it was 220-167. I think. I have to double check real quick. Yes. Yep. I'm so good at numbers. I mean, it's not like being good at- it's more just like memorizing things. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really- I'm really bad at it. I have to like... Triple check every- <laughs> I, I, Whenever I'm filling out like forms and stuff online, or like whenever I have to put in my credit card information or something like that, like I'm, I'll like check over and over and over again. I'm paranoid that I'll make a mistake. Cause you're like one second of distraction and I'll immediately just lose track of any like number that I was just told to remember. <laughs> like, well, it's gone. Cause it's just, it's something that's just so arbitrary that there's no connection to anything else in my well, life. See, so it, it's just raw, raw I, I, memorization. Have you ever heard of those people? That do like pneumatics or whatever and they can like write, they write a story in their head where they yeah. like, and then instantly memorize like hundreds yeah, of Yeah, I think I probably already numbers. talked to you about it. But yeah, where they like, they attach like, okay, the number eight runs me of a clown. So clowns walking down the street because the street is number one. And like number two is like a cat. So like I have to like, so they have to like, if they want to remember like a hundred numbers, they have to Cats like, th are clowns. think of this whole story in their brain. That's how they remember. Like there's competitions for how many numbers you can remember. And people will go like in the hundreds in order because they're, what they're doing is they're attaching it to a specific image in their brain and they're making a story that combines all these images. It's like a pneumatic device, but for numbers. I, I know, I know people who can memorize, like my, my boss knows all of our phone numbers by heart, which is fucking scary. <laughs> yeah, she'll come for you. You still haven't watched uh, Beastars Season 2, have you? Nah. What if I told you it opens with a snake? Um, well, then I have to watch it right now. There we go. Goodbye. Fuck. Yay, Shrimp Time This backfired. No, watch it after I've exploited you for content. <laughs> Exploit me for content first. <laughs> I don't know. I think I need to go watch Beastars right now. <laughs> Can you fried clams? Let's see. I do not like clams. I am. Sam, I am. I do not like clams. Clams are terrifying. Oh, um, what? I watched, I watched oh, you know what? Clam. Clams I clam. are okay. It's Did oysters you, I don't like. Sorry. I watched a clam digging the other day, and I'm like, oh. On, on, on I don't video? Like yeah, I'm like, people think about eating this. Who, whose idea was that? There is, um, I think. It's so distressing and alien. If you go to the Monterey Bay Aquarium, there is a, there is like a, demonstrative sculpture that is a it is a clam digging underground in a rock and it's just like a, it's like a it's like a sculpture so you can like look at it and understand like it 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 makes like you a kid could like look at it and be like oh that's how they dig and it's sticking out like it's very long tongue muscle thing and it's digging and it's like this is how far it'll get in like 10 years and mm -hmm. it's not very far but it, like I, I never forgot thinking about the clam outstretched because you never see it like that in the in real life or you have that goddamn like licking its lips animation, like yes, yes. Like it's the way that it looks like when it just like has its weird appendage like go along the rim and you're like. Mm, what oh, the they, fuck? They, don't they put like salt out? And they have like the it's like a there's you can watch a video of a clam like licking the salt off of something, but it's like I want to say it's like fast forwarded because they're very slow. They're not that slow though. They're just no. stressing. No. I, I have to I'll have to look this up because I, I remember they, like, right. I think they, their... they put salt out and they had a clam eat it, and the, so the clam like outstretches out of its shell and licks the salt, and it's very strange yeah. to look at. It's also like the distressing like digging where it, like it like tongues the sand. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It just like, sits there and licks. But, and, but like, apparently it can, it can go through and... rock. 
Yeah, and like it'll over like, time, like ten years, it'll like go a foot. You'll see it like dig deeper and deeper till it's like halfway in, and then it'll stop, and then it'll just geyser out. It'll just geyser out all the sand out of its like poop hole into the sky. Yeah, it just it's shoots. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, fascinating. Who, who wanted to eat this? <laughs> we did. <laughs> we thought lobsters were, were trash food, so we fed them the cattle for a long time. Is this his theme, or did we roll up on a place that has this theme? I think this might be his theme. Wow, I'm impressed. Your playstyle has been so good so far. I mean, your spells could be a bit optimized for sure. But your roleplay is freaking A. <laughs> Even Bob was impressed, and yeah, we've never had a girl at the table before. We're happy you're here. I'm really happy. I'll try to finish the campaign to the best of my ability. More NPCs, more background elements, more magic items. Ray, whoa. Oh, a girl? What have we rolled up on? Oh, a shrine. Wait, what do we get from this one? Oh. Have we got everything already? Do we get a friend? <laughs> We're lonely. Definitely partly like, what buttons are left? I yeah, I was, I, I was just thinking that. I was like... <laughs> Where are they going to put it? An Everlight booster that improves both your mining and your fishing. I haven't fished in a million so it just years. Makes the, yeah, <laughs> I haven't done either of those that much lately. Might as well. But I guess it just makes them easier. Don't you just wish you can upgrade yourself like this in real life? <laughs> or ever. Just get good at things by with magic. I know Kung Fu. I, why would you want to know Kung Fu? That's just the, uh, the reference point. I'd rather- or, or like Trinity being like, I need to know how to fly a helicopter. <laughs> See, I'd rather know how to do that. I was watching, uh, I was watching somebody talk about Jeff Bezos and he's like, Basically, like Jeff Bezos was had it Eddie Burback. It was Eddie Burback. Because it's this, the Jeff Bezos uh, villain it's, video. It, yeah, it's a villain. It, it was pretty entertaining. I watched it on my lunch. But he was like talking about how like he he's like oh he had built a yacht that is uh, the the like size 34 of thirty four stories. Tall. Yeah, if you, if you, you know, thirty eight. If you laid a building ah. down, it was thirty eight stories tall. That's how long Jeff Bezos' yacht is. And he had to put a helipad because you know because his girlfriend likes to fly helicopters, so he's <laughs> he doesn't really like him very much. But he's like appealing to her. He, like, he built it there for her. Like, oh, my boyfriend put it in a helipad for me. That's so cute. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Stella, I Stella. think you've had enough time off. I've marked a few errands for you to do. Francis will provide you with the details. Alana. Wait, what, what's our sister's name again? You have a bit more to go. I think you can upgrade your stations. Uh, Lily? I don't know. Why did I think her name was Elena? Is it Elena or Elena? <laughs> yeah. Or Helena or Helena. Da, 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 Complete da, Elena's errands with Francis. Da, 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 Isn't Francis the shark? Da, 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 no, it's Albert. Da, da. Who's Francis? Da, da. Who the fuck is Francis? I don't remember. I, I don't know who Francis is. What's the worst thing I could say? Things are better if I stay so long and good night. <laughs> Dude, little so me was like, I was like, this is so hot magic. Night. He he killed her with his car or whatever. <laughs> he was like, that's, that's what the song says. Who the fuck is Francis? When both our Ooh. cars collide. Silk fabric for the cow stall. Why, why does the cow need silk fabric? It's an upgrade for something. It's a bougie cow right there. Who the fuck is Francis? Wait, is Francis? Oh, Francis, old oh, man, the old onion. man, old man, onion. Onion. Yes. <laughs> we, we figured it out. We figured it out, everybody. No comments necessary. But you already did, didn't you? I know you. They're like, bitch. <laughs> Get your shit together. What kind of let's player are you? Uh, the average kind. I'm, this isn't my. <laughs> That's not true. The average let's player has three views per video and gave up six months ago. Um, this isn't my profession, okay? I'm just along for the ride. I'm having a fun time with my friend Keith. I'll teach you to have fun. Oh no! I'm trying to think, like, what, what is the meanest game you can make someone play? Like, what is the most... Trucker, trucker Simulator. Uh, Truck Simulator is fun. For that much time, though? Uh, Desert cakes. Bus is the game that's just torture. Uh, Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. That's the one where you just drive on a on like a road in the middle of the desert for like dozens of hours. Yeah, and they have like um, Trucker Simulator actually has a really it. compelling gameplay loop. 
Oh, okay. Then yeah, I was thinking the desert bus one because it's like people speed run it as a joke because you can't speed run it because it's like yeah, which is very funny uh, to me to think about. It improves up here. I'm about to fuck you up. Oh, what does a cat need with silk? It needs uh, it gets less hungry when it has silk. <laughs> so why? Don't ask questions. Because it's wearing a dress. And it's wearing a dress. It makes and it, it forget it, that it's hungry. It, 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 it's, it's wearing a dress, and it's just like skinny feels better than that feels better than food tastes. <laughs> skinny cow is a brand of ice cream. Yeah. So it's that maybe that's it. It wants to fit Celestial into Celestial sheet. And steel sheet and gold ingot. That's a lot to take. Celestial in. sheet. Who made Celestial that one of those before? Celestial sheet. Well, I, it's uh, I, I just always check this place and find out the hard Where way. Where the fuck am? Oh, there I'm over here now. Hello. Wait, we, we should go someplace while it's nighttime, because we have to go do all of our stuff for our sister. Celestial sheet here. Yes. Yeah, I should find out what she wants to do next. But by the time we get there, it won't be nighttime anymore. That's the pro. That's kind of the problem with this. You pretty much end up just having to wait. But we should get there and then wait. Oh, Furagawa. Uh, I uh, forgot I... where I was supposed to go next. <laughs> oh my gosh, Keith, Keith Ballard. Hey, uh, you want to hear a joke? The economy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, what's the difference between uh, a a dirty bus stop and a lobster with breast augmentation? Um. One is a crusty bus station, the other one's a busty crustacean. No, no. <laughs> Let me have one. No, no. That's a cute joke. I was trying to think of like an answer. Um, I like the one that uh, C.S. Wait, C.S. Lewis? No, not C.S. Lewis. Lewis Carroll wrote that he had to make an answer for after the fact because he wrote a, a joke for Alice in Wonderland with, but didn't it didn't have an answer, mm -hmm. and so he had to go back later and, and he wrote two answers to it, which means that he's like a very smart man. Because it's like, what's the difference between a raven and a writing desk? Like, or like, like, no, like, what's, uh, like, like, how are they the same? I think is what it is. It's like, they're, they're both nevar put with the wrong end in front. Because <laughs> raven backwards is nevar, and you don't put a writing desk with the wrong end in front. And they both produce a flat note, which is also a really good one. They both produce a flat note is really good. Yeah, no, he, he, he wrote that <laughs> joke and it wasn't supposed to have an ending. Yeah, and then and he had to come up with he had, People asked him about it, so he had to come up with an ending. They are, ne they are never put the wrong end in front. They oh both produce God, a the flat, flat note. note. one is really good. Yeah, no, he came up with that. Like, his, like, like it, it, how much work the is other it one's to write it? Like, That's a stretch, what? yeah. What did you say? Uh, it makes more sense when you're reading it because you yeah. see the nevar, which is Raven backwards part. But like, uh, to, it's much harder to write a joke backwards like that. Yeah, because yeah, you write you write from the uh, the realization forward. The one I always liked is, and I know I've told you this one before, but it's the one in um, fucking um, Breakfast Club where he like uh, Judd's character is climbing through the vent, and he's like something like uh, a naked blonde walks into a bar with a. A poodle under one arm and a, and a two foot salami under the other. She walks up to the bar and puts the salami down and says, and the bartender says, I guess you won't be needing a drink. And the blonde says, and he falls through the vent and you don't hear the end of the joke. And my whole life as a kid, I was like, what's the fucking end of that joke? There wasn't <laughs> one. And they didn't write one, and I'm really disappointed that it's not a real joke. The real joke is your investment. Because <laughs> well, he's like saying it to himself like very slowly as he's crawling through the vent just for fun. He's just, like, saying it to himself. And he's, like, above the principal's office. It's a very tense moment in the movie. Yeah. And then he, like, he's, like, and the blonde says, and he goes, fuck! Because he, like, falls through the through the vent. <laughs> That's a great I was movie. I was already trying to anticipate the joke. Because, it because, uh, was it? It's, like, a tall blonde is also a drink. What drink is it? I need uh. that. There's a... It's named after me. <laughs> I have green hair right now, though. But there's a because I just know that there's like there's a, there's beers that are blondes. Oh yeah. So I was like I was I was already trying to make connections of like what of like where it was gonna go. Finish that now. He's fucking judging us for not having a fully upgraded ship from beyond the grave. What the fuck do you have? What does she oh. have? What does she have going for her? Look, I glitched again. There we go. 
Did I finish every single building? I think I did. Even the sheep stalls? I think I'm a boss ass bitch. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, yeah, the next they update. The primary next investment, I think, is just to make more sheep stalls. Because <laughs> we still only have two. Well, maybe, I wonder, are there things that we can't update because we haven't bought the blueprints from our shark friend and she's going to judge us for not having those things upgraded because don't we have upgrades we just don't have yet? Uh, I think we have the important stuff from the shark. I think now it's like speed upgrades and stuff. Where is... thing? Dude, I'm so sad about Mickey, oh. dude. What, I, I can't... We, we fucked up. We need oak planks and a lot of copper to make more sheepies. Apparently, like, our whiplash t-shirt nice failed us, so we did something wrong there, and Mickey, fa Mickey failed us, too. I mean, that, might not, that may have not been a characteristic thing. I just don't think, like, I feel like that was a very unsatisfying journey with that person. I don't feel like they, they, they I don't think they learned anything. Well, people, people were also saying that Mickey was going to have us make carrots and peaches, because they're both euphemisms for drugs, but, the, but then what we, the like, fuck? we finished all the steps in one go without talking to them again, so he just oh. reacted like the chain was over without telling us to do the next thing. I, I've guess, never Because I guess we were never supposed to- we never were actually supposed to make a hundred carrots because he meant something else. But the well, I, I we thought made, maybe but he the meant, moment like, we made money, any carrots, like, he's like, what the fuck is this? No, okay, get me some peaches or whatever. And then he made peaches and it's like, what the- what's wrong with you? Well, I don't understand- This isn't working out. I'm a, I'm a crime lord. I feel like that's a- that's a- that's an over- that's an oversight in the game, because, like... Okay, I thought carrots was like gold. I've never, I've never, ever once heard peaches or carrots used as euphemisms for drugs, and I've like, I'm not like, I'm not like, I haven't like been around the bend, but like I know my, yeah. I know stuff. Like I'm pretty worldly. I know stuff. Is that my boyfriend? Is that my boyfriend? This photo album sure makes you look well traveled, sis. Listen up, because I'm going to read your embarrassing postcard. Ha ha! Let me find my famous Stella voice one second. Oh, okay, well, how does Stella sound? Um, according to a, a <laughs> dear mom, mom and sister. dad and Lily, <laughs> I want a meatball. Sub. I want a meatball. <laughs> My trip has been amazing so far. I've even been making friends. What a boring thing to say. Oh, what a boring thing to say. At this rate, this wait. I don't know which part. Is, it, is yep. she still her? <laughs> At this rate, the summer vacation will be gone in a flash. Last weekend, I went to Shirakawa Go in the Toyama Prefecture. I took an hour to visit these beautiful rice paddies. It was an impressive sight. Next to these incredible houses at the bottom of the mountains. I was especially beautiful at night with the glow of the moon. It was. I met a man on our tour, but not like that mom. Oh, Stella, you perv. He's an art curator from Germany. That sounds cool. Mm. Oh, Gustav. Gustav. Oh, look how handsome he is. He's creating an art exhibition in Nagasaki. The tour was in Japanese, so he helped me with some of the nuances. He gave me his address and invited me to his show. I miss you all, and I can't wait for you to visit me in a few months. Stella. P.S. Stay out of my room, Lily. Eh. I didn't. Wow. You were so outgoing. I don't remember ever being like that. So full of life. I was always a bit dramatic, let's say. I wonder if you went to see Gustav's exhibition. That was his name, right? We never got to go on that trip to see you. Dad got sick around that time. He had trouble walking. His body was swelling and everything hurt him. I never understood why they kept it from you. They probably knew you'd come back as soon as they told you. To take care of him. I got to see Dad get sicker and sicker. I wasn't able to do anything to help. I still remember your face when you got home. For a second, it was like you didn't recognize him. Let's keep going. It's not like you'd ever shied away from death. You basically made it your whole world. I'm sure you've got some pictures of when you moved to Montreal. Let's take a look. It's like a lot to process, like that kind of life, like making it such a central thing in your life. What, death? Yeah. Well, I mean, we do know, like, a ICU nurse. Yeah. I, I, I wonder, like, how, how, you, how you cope with something like this. I guess it's just something that you have to get used to. It gets easier over time. Like, at what cost, I wonder. There's so much of our society spends most of their life actively distracting themselves from its existence. As, like, a goal. 
you think are you like this is like a heavy question <laughs> are you afraid to die you think yeah <laughs> yeah that's that's something that's pretty normal I, I don't want to die like I have too many things going on I'd be really <laughs> sad if I had to die right now you know, I, I feel like very like uh, unfulfilled because I would be like, "What about my dog?" Or like, "What about like all these things?" I have to say to people. I think the process of dying can be painful, and that in itself is scary. Like, I think getting like getting a terrible disease would be like probably one of my biggest fears. But I think like to die in and of itself, I don't think like as as a little you know atheist, I don't think anything's happening to me. So I think it just ends and nothing. And I think that's kind of very relieving to think about. I know people think that that's scary, but I actually think that's more relieving. I see it's like the collapsing of all possibility. I mean, that is true. Like, I think that like that's the part to be afraid you of. You continue having potential until exactly that moment where all of it collapses, but, and then there's nothing else ever again. But you don't have to regret. Like in my perspective, you don't have to regret any of the things that you didn't get to do, and you don't have to. You're not even aware that you didn't finish things. Yeah, it's but just, I, I feel bad for the people I, don't I leave care about the out I don't care about the outside judgment of it. I just care about the actual experience of not it being anymore. And not getting to do anything any ever again. But see, but I don't think you'd realize it because I just I just think your brain would stop working and you wouldn't even know that you were dead. It's it's like it's like before you were born, like you don't even know that you have the potential to be alive. You just oh, are. Enjoy that final note, everybody. Yeah, sorry guys. 